Hello and welcome to your region this week. I'm Anandi Carol Willery. Stratford and District Chamber of Commerce announced the creation of the Chamber of Young Professionals earlier last week. We spoke with members about the benefits this could have on the community. So today we're launching an exciting new group called the uh, Chamber Young Professionals Group. Um, so we've attached it to the Chamber uh, simply because the Chamber is all about growing uh, business within the Stratford and St. Mary's community. Um, however, uh, there's not a lot out there right now for young professionals and that's why we've created the need, or sorry, that's why we've created this group, is to kind of fill that need and, and hopefully service people who are, you know, a little bit younger and they want to put down roots and grow and, and stay here in Stratford long term. You know, sometimes in smaller towns it can be, it can be tough to, uh, you know, put yourself out there and, and network, right? So uh, the whole idea behind CYP or the Chamber of Young Professionals is to provide people ages 21 to, you know, roughly 40 with the tools they need to, to be able to do that and to be able to make meaningful uh, relationships within the business community here in uh, Perth County. Well, first and foremost, the enthusiasm and energy that the young professionals will bring to the city not only their business acumen, but their new and innovative ideas, I think are going to be instrumental in Stratford's economy growing in different ways than it has in the past. I think many of them are starting to adapt to technology, using the opportunity to be connected, doing business around the world. They can locate anywhere, and I think they're finding that they can do it here. They can have neat ideas. They can come to events like this and mix together, or they can actually collaborate online. I think many of them have actually have a warm worldly view of where the economy is headed and how they can do business in different areas at any given time. I think that type of enthusiasm changes what retail was in the past, changes what manufacturing was in the past, changes any number of professional services. And I think it speaks to the education they have today and the more outward view of the world they have. The Young Chamber it's, it's going to help us connect with other business owners that are younger. It's going to be a way for me to reach out to see what sort of hurdles they've come over or for me to maybe help some people uh, overcome some of the hurdles that I've had to deal with. So I think it's just nice. It's a good network. It's knowing that you're not alone. Tonight's event is the first one. It's the kickoff. It's kind of for everyone to understand who's all around. Uh, I know a lot of faces that I've seen tonight, but I didn't realize that we were all in the same boat. We weren't all business owners. I had no idea. So it's kind of, it's that first step. And then from here, we'll see where we go. So you can find us on Facebook, um, on the Stratford Chamber of Commerce uh, Facebook page. All of the Chamber Young Professional groups are, are sorry, uh, events are going to be on that uh, website. Um, you can go on there, sign up for our events. Uh, we're going to be holding roughly one event per quarter, um, and then we'll kind of go from there. We're really looking for feedback from our members on how, they, and, how and what they want this group to become. Um, so we're looking to, uh, to get feedback on that. A brand new student facility was opened in Waterloo. With two more buildings on the way, Res1 is looking to improve the quality of student living. Today we are here to celebrate the opening of the Fergus House. Oh, I think uh, since I came to Canada 10 years ago, I think uh, we find that there's a need for the student residents here in Canada. And uh, from that time to build a dream student community, uh, that has been my dream. I would say very excited because back in first year I lived on campus it wasn't really it wasn't the greatest building that I've ever lived in so moving a building like this is really exciting because look at all the facilities I get I get a gym in my own building it's just so convenient well the first thing is on uh, this building is really close to campus so also it's a student condos I look forward to make friends in this building and maybe like study with them like form study groups and then utilize like all the facilities in here like just, like study rooms, like I said, and conference rooms, maybe have like group meetings in there, and just to improve like my work efficiency overall. As a graduate student uh, from University of Waterloo, I always recognize this city as my second hometown. Uh, after a few years of graduating, it still gives me a strong sense of belonging. During these years, I witnessed the significant development uh, actually happened at the city of Waterloo. My every suite is fully furnished. 
I think it's with everything. You just need to bring your beddings and to move in. I think that is the biggest thing. I think uh, my son lives here too. He enjoys very much. My daughter is in the other area. She doesn't. I spend a lot of time trying to find the furniture for her. I think uh, I wish she could live here. Well, you know, uh, we're home to about 50,000 students here in our community. And what we really want to do is make sure they have the best experience possible here. They've certainly made the right choice with Conestoga College, Wilfrid Laurier University, and University of Waterloo. But then we want them to have the best experience when they're off campus as well. So what we have here at Res 1 at the Fergus House is great, high-quality um, uh, student housing that uh, would make any parent proud to send their kids to Waterloo. Oh, today we also kick off officially the pre-leasing process for the Hasbullah House, which is the third building uh, of the signature project uh, of uh, Philip Square. So this one we open for leasing uh, for September 2020. Actually, at this moment, all of our buildings are fully occupied for the coming three years. So this Hasbullah will be a new opportunity for anybody uh, who wants to have the Res 1 experience. Your region this week will be right back after these messages. Welcome back. 570 News' is Mike Farwell spoke with Conservative leader Andrew Scheer about the campaign and what is to come in the next few weeks. And Andrew Shear joins us by phone as he makes his way to this community. Mr. Shear, we thank you for the time. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me on. This uh, announcement you made this morning that uh, is going to ease, make it easier for companies to pay dividends to family members, what does that look like on the ground? Well, basically, we recognize the fact that many small business owners have had their spouse share in the risk the uh, difficult years, uh, uh, supporting the business in a variety of ways that is often very difficult for Revenue Canada to determine and to document. And so rather than have uh, spouses, wives or husbands have to fill out multiple reams of paper showing, uh, you know, minuting every time that they help support their, their, their family business, we're just going to exempt them from the Liberal tax cycle altogether and recognize the, the sacrifice they make to help make sure these small businesses succeed. I wanted to ask a little bit more about an announcement you made yesterday, Mr. Shear, as well, on housing. And this would be, give Canadians the ability to take out mortgages amortized at 30 years, as well as reducing or easing the stress test for first-time home buyers. Are, are you not concerned that those policies would increase both home prices and debt levels? Uh, no, uh, specifically with the 30-year amortization, this is a, a very targeted measure, measure to first-time home buyers, and we know that uh, studies have shown that most young couples who purchase their first home see their income go up as the years go by, and uh, so they're actually more uh, easier to uh, maintain those mortgage rates as they go into the future. Uh, this is something that uh, that industry experts have have looked at as, as striking the right balance between uh, ensuring that debt levels are are manageable and uh, making it a little easier for young couples to get into, into new homes. And on the stress test, there are a lot of unintended negative consequences that, uh, that, uh, that the stress test brought in. For example, uh, you, can, you don't have to go through a stress test if you switch banks. Uh, sorry, you, you don't have to go through a stress test if you stick with your original bank at a time of renewal. And that means that banks can really uh, hold some people hostage to a higher rate because they don't have to uh, compete with other lenders. So uh, that's something that we're going to address by reviewing the stress test as well. You mentioned Liberal leader Justin Trudeau and his personal brand, and you have pointed out uh, on more than one occasion with, with fairly good evidence, Mr. Shear, that there seems to be a bit of a double standard with Mr. Trudeau when it comes to the SNC-Lavalin affair and, of course, the most recent blackface scandal. However, during this campaign, you yourself have decided to add Conservative Party candidates who have made either hateful, homophobic or racist comments. And you've said, and I'll quote you here, I accept the fact that people make mistakes in the past and can own up to them and accept that. Now, if Justin Trudeau has apologized for his mistake, why are you still asking him to resign? 
Uh, well, first of all, I'm ask, I asked him to resign when it came out that he politically interfered in a criminal court case, uh, and that's, uh, that's when he lost the moral, moral authority to govern. It's now up to Canadians to determine who's going to be prime minister of this country. But I pointed out the fact that it is so hypocritical for Justin Trudeau to demand other people resign, uh, to condemn people for things they did long ago, and then plead for forgiveness for himself. He won't even hold himself to the standards that he sets for other people. It's his fakeness, his phoniness, the fact that even when he apologized, he lied about how many times he had done it. And now he still can't answer uh, to Canadians if he's done it since 2001. So he's a complete fraud and a phony on these types of things. And people are sick and tired of, of the hypocrisy and the fact that he always says one thing but does another. Is it hypocritical to accept the apologies of conservative candidates but not the liberal leader? Well, I might have been, and, and Canadians might have been able to accept his apology if it was sincere, if, uh, if he hadn't lied while he was apologizing. Um, it might have come across as a bit more authentic, but nothing about this guy is authentic at all. And I think people are seeing, you know, this is the first guy to condemn other people uh, for mistakes in their past. This is the first guy to, uh, to, to, to hold people to, for, for things they did in their past. Uh, then when it comes to himself, he tries to blame it on people. He's like, we have to learn from this. You know, it's because we have this privilege. Well, J- Justin Trudeau should have known better than anybody growing up in the household he did. Uh, he should hold himself to a higher standard. Now it's in the hands of Canadians. They will make the ultimate determination. Uh, but what I'm hearing from more and more is that people are sick and tired of the hypocrisy the, and, the, uh, and the double standards with them. Do you know better now, Mr. Scheer, than you did in 2005 when you made that speech in the House of Commons comparing same-sex marriage to a dog's tail? Well, as I said uh, many times before I've addressed that issue, that was uh, a debate when uh, the subject of same-sex marriage was was up for debate. That was when Canadians had their say in two different elections. Uh, Parliament voted. Uh, society has moved on. I've moved on. This is clearly something that is uh, is part of Canada now. Uh, LGBT Canadians have, have have access to marriage under this law. We will we will uphold and and support that law. This is not something that is going to be changed. This is again liberals trying to bring up things from the past uh, just to distract from their own scandals and corruption. Do you think that's something that you should apologize to Canadians for? I think people understand that I support LGBT rights and, and promote the uh, quality and inclusivity of all Canadians. I will continue to be uh, a champion for that. That was a, a position uh, based on a vote that was happening in Parliament when the subject of marriage was literally, it was literally up for debate. That was when Parliament was deciding on, on what would be done. And as I said, Canadians had their say in two elections uh, and uh, society has moved on and I've moved on. If you were to pick, Mr. Shear, the one issue that resonates most loudly in this campaign, what is that issue for you? It's definitely affordability and the cost of living. Uh, I believe the ballot question in this election is who do you trust to make life more affordable and help you get ahead? It's certainly not Justin Trudeau. We can't trust anything he says. He lies and he breaks promises. He certainly is not making life more affordable. He's raising taxes. His carbon tax is going to have to go up massively to achieve uh, the, the, the goals he set for himself. We know that's going to make home heating, gasoline, groceries more expensive. Our plan is all based around leaving more money in the pockets of Canadians so they can get ahead. Mr. Shear, we appreciate your time. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Your region this week continues right after this. Welcome back. 519 Sports Online covers the Resurrection Phoenix football game against the St. Mary's Eagles. Let's see how the game played out. Oh, 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 oh,
District 8 Senior Football on Wednesday afternoon. The Resurrection Phoenix going for their second straight win to start the season. The Phoenix hosting the St. Mary's Eagles, who were shooting for their first victory of the year. And a good start for the Resurrection defense. Brady Ioannidis breaks through, and he wraps up Noah Williams, who has nowhere to go. Nice play by Ioannidis. Later, this is Res quarterback Nick Henning looking for some running room. Zach Harvey and Keon Gratton, a couple of Waterloo Region Predators with the tackle for the Eagles. The game is scoreless after the first quarter. To the second and the Phoenix in the red zone, Nick Henning fakes the handoff and it's a QB keeper. That's a 14-yard run from Henning, giving the Phoenix a 7-0 lead. Then the Phoenix going to the air. Henning connecting with Jared Weiler and he weaves his way through the Eagles defense. Weiler takes it down to the 10 yard line. Rez looking to strike again and a few plays later this is Javonta Crawford punching it in from one yard out. Crawford and the Phoenix taking a 14-0 lead. Back to the highlights in a moment, but first, a reminder. This video is brought to you by the Waterloo Region Minor Football Association play for the Predators in 2020. Still in the second. How about this run by Matt Weber? He goes right, can't find any room, so he goes left. That's a good idea. Weber finds a lane, and look out, he is gone. A 45-yard touchdown and the Eagles closing the gap. They trail 14-7 at the half. Third quarter now. Here goes Jackson Lewis down the far side. He's looking to score, but Jaden Boxwell chases him down and saves a touchdown. Eventually, the Phoenix go for it on third and goal. The handoff to Jackson Lewis, and he is stuffed by the Eagles' defense. It's a turnover on downs and a goal line stand from St. Mary's. Next possession for the Phoenix. They go play action. Nick Henning to Jared Weiler. Touchdown resurrection. That's a one yard pass for a major. Rez is up by 13. It's 21-8 as we move to the fourth. Malik Vanderpool avoids the pressure. Flips it over to Keon Gratton. He breaks a tackle and scores. All of the sudden we've got Got ourselves a six point ball game. It's 21 15. Final minute. Now the Eagles with the ball looking to drive for the lead. It's third down. Malik Vanderpool with a pass to the far side and it falls incomplete. That's it. The Phoenix hang on for the victory and they improve their record to 2 0 this season. Resurrection will now face St. David in week three in a battle of two unbeaten teams. The County of Brant has announced that demolition of the KFC on Dumfries Street in Paris is underway. Earlier this year, the county acquired the land on which the KFC sits in order to move forward with the restoration of the Balkut Centre. Future plans with the Balkut Centre will be decided by Council later this year. The centre is one of the oldest civic Gothic buildings in Canada. A Cambridge man has been named FedEx Express Canada's Courier of the Year. Out of more than 5,500 nominations from across the country, Jeff Welsh was nominated by customers who recognized his commitment and superior service. Jeff will be awarded with an extra week's paid vacation and $500 cash. Every week until the election, your region this week will be sharing the names and parties of the candidates running in your local riding. On October 21, 2019, Voters in the Waterloo riding will have the chance to vote for the candidate they favour the most. The seat is currently held by Liberal MP Bardish Chagger, who is running for re-election. Those looking to take over the seat are Jerry Zhang of the Progressive Conservative Party, Laurie Campbell of the New Democratic Party, Kirsten Wright of the Green Party, and Erica Trobe of the People's Party. October 21st will be the day where your votes are heard. 
The local results will have your election results alongside 570 News right here on Rogers TV. Your region this week, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Every week, your region this week will have the highlights from the Kitchener Rangers and the Guelph Storm over the past week. Here's Sean Favaro with the breakdown. Kitchener Rangers opened their season up on Friday night. Let's take a look at it. DJ King gets Saginaw on the board first, but here Jonathan Yances with a lot of work from Leon Powell ties it up 1-1 in the first period. Late in the first, it was Blade Jenkins putting Saginaw on top 2-1. But in the second period, the 50-goal man from last season gets the Rangers even once again as Jonathan Yancis scores his second of the game, tying it up 2-2. Two to two. In the second period, partway through, shorthanded here is Damian Giroux setting up DJ Bustecker to go up 3-2. And then on the power play, it's Cole Koski coming in from the point to go up 4-2. to two. The Rangers down 2 in the third period. But Ville Ottavainen finds Reed Vallad in front of the net for the rebound, and the second-year player gets a goal back for the Rangers, 4-3. to three. And right here, Francesco Pinelli, the rookie first-round pick, ties it up 4-4. Four, four. Off we go to overtime. Reed Vallad doing some hard work here again, looking down low with about a minute left to go. In overtime, finds Ryan Stepien for the overtime winner against his old team as the Rangers come back from behind to win five to four in overtime. There you see the final board there. Jonathan Yances with two goals. Liam Howell makes some new friends in Kitchener in his first game with three assists. DJ King and Ilya Soliolov get two points each for the Saginaw Spirit. The Guelph Storm opened up their season against the Ottawa 67s, but what better way to start the game than by raising the banners for their championship season last year. In the first period, it was rookie Danny Jilkin getting his first OHL goal on his first OHL shot to put the Storm up 1-0. In the second period, Ottawa answers back as Marco Rossi gets the goal on the power play to knock this one up at 1. In the second period, later on halfway through, it's Pavel Gogola with his first of the year putting the Storm back up on top by a score of 2-1. But Noel Hoffenmeyer with the big shot from the point. One assist on the first goal, scores the second to tie it up at two. We are headed to overtime and a shootout. But on the third shooter, Austin Keating puts Ottawa on front with the game on the line. Keegan Stevenson ties it up and we're off to sudden death. Cameron Tolnai gets the goal for Ottawa and then Andre Bakanav has to extend it here with the goal, but he is stopped by Cedric Andre. Ottawa wins 3-2 in a shootout. Pavel Gogolev with one goal and one assist. Noel Hoffenmeyer with one goal and one assist. And Danny Jilkin with his first OHL goal coming early in that game, only a minute 30 into the game. Upcoming games for your Guelph Storm, Friday the 27th, Owen Sound is at Guelph. That is a 7.30 p.m. puck drop. The next night, it's up in Owen Sound, a back-to-back home-and-home series, the 28th. That is a 7.30 puck drop. Upcoming games for the Rangers, Friday the 27th, Kitchener is at Sault Ste. Marie. That's a 7 o'clock start. Sunday the 29th, they move along to Sudbury for a 2 p.m. afternoon tilt. And this week's Out of Town Rangers games will air on 570 News. That's it for another episode of Your Region This Week. For more information on the show, or if you have a story idea, visit our website, rogerstv.com, and fill out the proposal form at the bottom. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.